All right, so what we're going to discuss today is belted magnum head spacing. I've been seeing a lot of uh, different discussions on various internet forums about head spacing off the belt versus head spacing off the shoulder in your typical belted magnum cases, you know, 300 wind mags, 338s, 7 millimeter M mags, blah, blah, blah. Seems to be a lot of guys saying, oh, they always head space off the shoulder versus head spacing off the belt. Well, do a little research, you'll find out that these seven millimeters and 338s and 300 wind mags were never designed, in fact, to head space off the shoulder. They were designed to head space, or off the belt, pardon me. They were decide, designed to head space off the shoulder. Now, guys are kind of, there's a lot of confusion about this. So what I've set out to do here is try and clear some of it up. Um, I've already done all my measurements and that I spared you from having to watch me go through an hour of measuring cases and full length sizing and blah, 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 blah. So what I did was I have this barrel here in my vise. This is a factory Ruger uh, 300 wind mag barrel. So I took and I, I measured, so what I've got here is I've got a federal factory round. I've got a once fired case out of this particular barrel. I've got another once fired case that I've full length sized. Now I full length it multiple times and measured each step along the way, trying to see if I could actually headspace off the belt with using standard uh, Redding Deluxe dies and uh, RCBS standard shell holders. None of these competition shell holders guys are no Specially made dies, just standard off the shelf stuff you can get in any sporting goods store. Now, I also used uh, some PTG headspace gauges. These are belted mag headspace gauges. So, how these work is you put them in when you're chambering the rifle, you put these in the barrel as you're going along to check your progress. And once you're, you know, get tight on the on the go gauge and you can't close the bolt well you know you're almost there you've got six thou between go and no go roughly between these two gauges right so all we did here was we took these gauges dropped them in the chamber like that and then I took my my uh, vernier caliper and just measured from the base of the Shell or uh, headspace gauge or the case to the the shoulder of the barrel here, and then that's where I've got all these different measurements. So I've got measurements coming out my wazoo. Um, you can kind of see them all there. If you guys even really care about all this stuff, you probably don't. So let's go right. Let's start at the start and go to the finish. What I discovered while doing this little exercise was that with my setup, I cannot get these cartridges to headspace off the belt. I can get damn close. I can get within about one thousandths of an inch of headspacing on the belt versus headspacing on the shoulder, but I cannot get them to headspace off the belt. Now, I've had another friend of mine did the same thing with a 338 wind mag. He had the same results. He couldn't do it, but he had the barrel on the rifle, so... This, I thought, was a little better way of actually measuring versus just trying to go by um, bluing the case up and then trying to see where it was contacting. So these are our final measurements. So our total case overall length change, so that was from the neck to the base of the cartridge. It, it grew two thou from firing. Now this is when it's blowing the shoulder out against the, uh, the chamber. Once I sized it, it grew 11 thou in length. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Guys are arguing again about whether firing causes next to grow or sizing. I always believed it was the sizing that stretched them more than the firing. That kind of proved that little thought to me. Again, you know, take it for what it's worth. Your mileage may vary, but this is what I found. So the shoulder diameter changed a fair bit. Now this is where you're talking fire forming the case into the into the chamber you're getting um, the case grew 10 thou after firing on the diameter of the shoulder so if you look at the case this area right I measured this area right here 
This grew ten thousandths of an inch. When I full lengthed it, I got it down about four thousandths on the diameter. Now this didn't matter how far I pushed this, how far I changed the overall length from the shoulder to the base this stayed consistent so that's the most that die would size that shoulder down was about four thou I believe it was uh, sorry six thou anyway so we go from there the total base to shoulder change now this was measured with a Sinclair uh, comparator you can order these at Sinclair Brownells. This basically goes on your calipers. Hang on here. Try and give you a little quick demo of how this works. So this goes on your caliper. It's got this little set screw you lock down. Then you can take a case, whether this is the longer one, there's a shorter body as well. This you can use to load to check the length on loaded ammunition. Put it in there like that and measure across with your calipers and that'll give you your, your distances. Now you can do that with a fire to full length, etc. So our total base to shoulder change from firing was 32 thousandths of an inch. It changed in length. Um, I got it down so 12 thou was the most I could set that shoulder back <clears throat> with this particular die setup. Now that's on the length, not on the diameter. Again, like I said, the diameter only came down six thousandths of an inch. Um, so the cartridge, I found, found this kind of interesting as well. The cartridge actually ended up 20 thou longer from a fired state to it being in its maximum full length from uh, after I was full length and along, I did it four different times, different amounts of of setback. But I, th I found that kind of interesting. It still ended up quite a bit longer. Now this really, did the case get that much longer? I don't think so. What I believe happens here is because that shoulder is blown out and it's still bigger than the way it came from the factory, now it's... Um, you're not getting, I guess, a true measurement. And so that's kind of why you ended up 20 thou longer to the shoulder datum with the comparator versus where it started from the factory. So <clears throat> my go gauges in the chamber was 135 thou to the face. The no go was 141. So spent case, I had 133 thou, and a factory round, I had uh, 133 thou. That was a factory unfired round. Now also, the um, the go gauge is 220 thou from the sh from the shoulder to the base, which is if you look on your magnum drawings, that's your your base datum that the rest of the drawing is, is measured from. That's why you can use this same gauge for any of the belted magnum cartridges. Um, the brass actually measured four thou, the fired brass was four thou shorter and the non-fired was three thou shorter than the goal gauge. So again, you're starting, you're already starting further in than the goal gauge would allow. So I guess in conclusion, I don't know if that helped any of you guys understand anything. Hopefully somebody will learn something from this. I don't know, I'm not the best teacher. But as far as I could uh, manage, I could not use standard equipment to, <clears throat> to headspace a belted magnum cartridge off the belt versus the shoulder. So basically what's happening is you're not really even head spacing off the shoulder. You're head spacing off the diameter on the body on these. That's what I'm I'm garnering from all this measurement and whatnot. So hopefully this helps some of you guys understand this a bit better. Uh, if you if there's something I mixed up, feel free to correct me.
That's the best I could do. Thanks, guys.